Are you ready? What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Mad Men is here once again. We're closing in on the ending of season one. This is episode 10. So by next weekend, I usually do, you know, if there's one or two episodes left for the season, I usually do them together. But we'll see how things go. I might still do single episodes, but we'll see how things go next weekend. Anyways, let's get into episode 10. If you guys want to see more episodes, you know where to look. All right, you know where to look. Go check out the Patreon, man. There's plenty of shows over there that is not on YouTube currently that is waiting their turn. So make sure you go check that out if you want to see stuff early. And also, if you want to support the channel, man, because um, your boy's out here. You know what I'm saying? I'm putting in the work. I'm trying to get these videos out for y'all. And there's certain changes that is coming to the channel as well. There's certain great stuff is coming to the channel as well. So make sure you go check it out, man. Just go check it out. Just go check it out. It's good stuff over there, man. So help support your boy. Let me feel like I'm doing this for something. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much, man. Let's jump into the reaction. I will see you guys right after for the review. Elizabeth. Are you hiding your sugar bowl from me? Jean, I think I have some packets from the Howard Johnsons. Uh, Daddy, have a saccharin or nothing. Where is your sugar bowl? Do you want to wake up with a cold leg like Grandpa Herman? Is that Betty? don't live long. <laughs> Sometimes they lose their leg. Good to see you, Jean. Don. This is my friend Gloria. I heard you might be joining us. It's good to have another woman around. Give Betty a break. Oh, I live to serve. Yeah, you heard that, right? <laughs> I have a witness. <laughs> Honestly, it's unseemly. I can imagine everyone at the club. Is she waiting at the funeral, unbuttoning her top button like it was some Sadie Hawkins dance? She seems like a perfectly nice lady. She's a vulture. Her husband was a failure. When he died, they found out he cheated on his income taxes. Bertie, your father was married, what, 40 years? The man can hardly fix himself a cup of tea, let alone do laundry. All he needs is a housekeeper. A housekeeper goes home at night. Don. Let him have it. <sighs> I would like to talk to you for a moment about dollars and cents. Your dollars and cents. Now, my opponents want to increase federal expenditures as much as $18 billion a year. Turn it off. The other an ad made by a public relations team. Message received and forgotten. <laughs> that mixing <laughs> guy is on TV again. Should have never been this close. I'd say we could run them again, but I don't think you want to see them. It is your job, the shows and the ads. I was just wondering, there must be any number of people harvesting mud on Johnny Kennedy right now. Have we heard anything? We hear things, nothing useful. He's a womanizer. That's not gonna hurt him. Why do we need to attack when there's a story to tell? Kennedy, nouveau riche, recent immigrant who bought his way into Harvard, and now he's well-bred? Great. Nixon is from nothing. Kennedy, I see a silver spoon. Nixon, I see myself. Doesn't matter. If we were to run a special <laughs> ad, there are obvious benefits. It doesn't matter. When you run an ad that's positive, you're only convincing the people who are already voting for you. But when you run an ad that's critical, you get a shot at the people in the fence. You have to produce a spot that aims a howitzer at Kennedy's balls. I want to hear ideas. Relatability, in my opinion, doesn't really work when it comes on to political campaigns. No matter how much um, relatability you want to bring, it's like, oh, they were a normal citizen and yada, yada, yada. Um, it's the, what have you done for me lately kind of situation when it comes on to political campaigns, like what has he done? You get what I'm saying? Like, what has he done? What it had to do with him coming from nothing? Obviously he, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, you know what I'm saying? More, more than likely this person probably came from nothing, rise to the top 
political career, blah, blah, blah. Now he's here running for president. Now, how many people can get there? That's what I'm saying. Like, the relatability aspect of it kind of gets a little blurry. I get where he's coming from, but it kind of gets a little blurry. It all based on people's actions and what they've done when it comes on to um, people running for office. When people are running for president, you know, if, if you're going to vote, you're looking for what that person has done. Not necessarily they're brought up or, or what, because people change. People, you, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, those are the factors that come come in between there. It's like people change, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody remains the same. So, yes, it might be relatable is upbringing or you know, how he came to be or you can accomplish anything. Now you're running for president. That is relatable. I get it. But most people don't make their decision on who they're going to vote for based on that. It's more than likely is mostly based on what people have done. Um, an ad campaign is good. It helps to get the person's name out there. Um, but if you notice nowadays, when it comes on to political campaigns, what do they concentrate on? If they're going to create a hit piece on the opponent, they always talk about the stuff that they've done. What have they done? Right? What they've done in their political career. The bad things that they that they do that they think the citizens will look at and be like, ah, that guy may not be the best person to be running the country. You know what I'm saying? Like, you concentrate on those things. Now, they're trying to prop up Nixon. They're trying to prop up Nixon. You can't go with the story of his life. You that alone is not going to sell people to vote for him. It just it doesn't work that way. It, it, it for at least in my opinion, I don't. It doesn't work that way. Like being relatable to a person that's out there running for for president is not. It might get you votes, but it's not going to get you the majority of votes. After the long weekend. If we can switch to a conversation about paying clients, Menkins is coming in today to sign off on the rollout, father and daughter. I get the feeling old Abe Schmenken can kill this whole thing. Don, I want you to go in and ride bareback over Paul here. Don. Uh, Don, I want you on your best behavior. Excuse me? And I know she bothers you. Margaret and Mona are off to Block Island for Labor Day. Gone for the weekend, along with every other wife in town. We can go anywhere tonight. Why didn't I call you later? Uh, Joni, call me soon, because we can go anywhere. The new atrium will make the store brighter and more vibrant. It's a tea room. It's nice. But 30% of my ground floor is devoted to the restaurant business? Lunch and shopping. A day of indulgence. It's what ladies like. Yes. I saw that in the chapter here. It's much longer than the little schedule. It says we have to close our doors while it's getting nailed together. Like a movie premiere. The new Mankins. You will have a line in the first day. Even if you have to pay people to stand in it. We'll do whatever it takes. I am not against change. And let us assume that this is the most amazing idea in retail since buy one, get one free. <laughs> I still don't understand why we have to throw out the baby with the water. Can't I keep what I have and just build on it? Your customers cannot be dependent on it anymore. Their lives have changed. They're prosperous. Over the years, they've developed new tastes. They're like your daughter. Educated, sophisticated. They know full well what they deserve, and they're willing to pay for it. Why would I want to own a store that I wouldn't want to shop in? You had no problem abandoning that second floor hosiery store on 7th Avenue for your present location. And that's a story you'll be proud to tell your grandchildren. The only problem is they won't care. And they'll say, Grandpa... You gotta evolve with the times. Back in the olden days. <laughs> and it was. Everybody's jumping to forget it. First, my father actually started with nothing. And he made it into everything we're talking about. Who here can say that? I meant no disrespect, sir. None taken. Looks like we both get to keep our jobs a little while longer. Don't screw this up. Any 
think he likes me. I guarantee you there is nothing about you he likes. <laughs> He's very good. Persuasive. Yes. A little dashing for my taste. Dashing. <laughs> Got a phone with Brett Rowley, a doctor. Matt is probably my least favorite. About the exercise sandals. Did you tell him summer's over? They're not coming in, ever. Probably because they were disappointed with the creative. Rowley called it dull and humorless. And what did you say? What could I say? I've never lost an account before, especially one that was here before I got here. So you really put up a fight. You have very strong feelings. The day you sign a client is the day you start losing them. Are you going to tell Sterling, or should I? Unless you think you can wait until after the weekend. I'll take care of it. We lost Dr. Scholes. Where? Leo Burnett. Campbell enjoyed telling me it was something to do with creative. Well, I know I didn't drop the ball on this. Sales were steady. Probably didn't help that our billings crept up for no apparent reason. You know what my father used to say? Being with a client is like being in a marriage. Sometimes you get into it for the wrong reasons, and eventually they hit you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so there's a casting call at 4 o'clock. Double-sided aluminum. If Freddie Rumson's brain works the way I think it works, slow and obvious, I think we should go down to casting and see who's on the couch. When God closes a door, he opens a dress. Jesus Christ. Whoa! <laughs> Yo! What do you have there? Precious cargo? Mr. Rumson has me trafficking the Belgian pouch. If you want to see the proofs, you'll have to check with Mr. Cosgrove. It's his account. Look at you. Minister of Protocol. So, has Draper talked to Sterling yet? You'll have to ask him. Damn, she's giving him the cold shoulder, Excuse man. Me? I'm just trying to do my job, and you're making it very difficult. Peggy, dear, I think I understand what this is about, but you're not being professional right now. You think this is easy for me? I don't know. I don't know if you like me or if you don't like me. I'm just trying to get along here. I wonder, are you going to be nice to me? Or cruel? Cruel? What am I supposed to say? I'm married. And I heard all about how confusing that can be. Maybe you need me to lay on your couch to clear that up for you again. Good thing you're a writer now. What do you need me for? It's kind of your fault, Peggy, for it's getting incredible. involved with a married I mean, man. You knew he was up. married, and you're still I like wondering awesome. if he likes you or not. Shit sure was. Let me ask you something, Draper. Do any of these men have anything else to do? I just wanted to make sure the girls were, you know, matching. Exactly. <laughs> Is this the casting couch? What a great God that made two of you. <laughs> um, what a sweet thing to say. Um, Mirabelle. This is Donald Draper. He's our creative director here. What a pleasure to meet you. I think we're going to send everyone else home and use our authority to say that you two are the new faces of Cartwright double-sided aluminum. Oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> I think this calls for a celebration. Come on upstairs with us. One drink could be fun. How many birthdays have you had? 20. How about her? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you two a pair of bookends? What do you say, Draper? Shall we cast them in bronze and mount them on the credenza? <laughs> oh, my. Everything he says means something else, too. So, Mirabelle, what's your special talent? Singing, dancing, baton twirling? She has a wall full of blue ribbons back home in Winchester. Huh. You know, I have a few awards myself. <laughs> what is this? The tickles. Soft as a lamb's ear. You gotta feel this. I'm talking to you, Eleanor. Bro, what am I watching right now? <laughs> is, this, is, this, is this the start of a very intricate... Chicken. Of course. Porn scene. Give her a kiss. Right now. Aren't they sisters? Why do people always ask us that? 
Oh my god, because it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> well, I should be heading home. You know what? I think we should go too. Oh, come on. Nobody's going anywhere. Do you want to dance? That's nice. <laughs> I don't dance. I, I don't understand this. It, I mean, they call a casting couch. It's like, you cast them to be in a commercial? Listen, I should get going. Over to the left there. There you go. Don't make me use my spurs on you. <sighs> they don't do that anymore. Uh -huh. They turn off ACs and buildings. I'll be right outside. Like office buildings at night. I never I used when to use when I used to do retail. I my sister. I mean, I've been around the block a few times, but her. Now all you're thinking about is going around the block, huh? I don't even think I can get out of the driveway. I like your office. It's really fancy. Mirabelle. Love that name. <laughs> that is a beautiful name. <laughs> Listen to that. Matter I've heard so many, like, seven. really good names recently. I'm just like, We're damn, down. where the fuck have I been? <laughs> you have such beautiful skin. My God, I just want to eat it. You want to eat her skin? I want to skin? suck your blood like Dracula. Okay, it's a bit much. Hey, you know what the funny thing is about certain things that happen with these men? Is that they continuously do this, and it's just not bringing them any sort of happiness or anything. You're married, aren't you? Yes. I don't even know what I'm gonna talk about for this episode in the review because just like a married man, your own way, no talking you out of it. Is it good or bad? Oh, it's good. Maybe it's this office, but you were selling too hard. Oh shit, did you have a heart attack? Do what? I, uh, I feel like there's a tank on my chest. Uh, just uh, call an ambulance and then leave. Is he okay? <laughs> leave. Right there. Mirabelle. Oh, Mirabelle. Mirabelle. Wife's name is Mona. <laughs> Gotta protect this idiot. All these years I thought it would be the Elsa. Did everything you told me. Drank the cream. I ate the butter. I get hit with a coronary. Fun. Do you believe in energy? What do you mean, like the thing that gives you get up and go? No. Like a human energy? So elaborate, sir. I don't know. soul oh a soul yeah. okay I've been living the last 20 years like I'm on shore leave what the hell is that about it's living it's like you said God he's doing great Mona. So hard to feel sorry so for these more. dudes. Oh God, I love you so. Much. It is so hard to feel sorry for you. Every, I leave it for the review because niggas like this just they get on my nerves, man. Margaret is outside. And she needs no, to see no, you. No, no, I can't let her see me like this. So weird are these men that just have their their wife. And kid at home, and they just out here just doing whatever. Okay. 
I mean, why can't, why is that not enough? And that's the thing, you know, I was going to leave it till the review, but why, why is it not enough, guys? If you're on my channel, if you're watching my channel and, and you're cheating, I'm not telling you to confess anything, but why is it not enough? I, I, I don't get it. If you have a wife at home and kids at home, why is it not enough? T tell me, explain to me why it's not enough. I have a ton of friends, and this is a question that I always, I always ask them when I have, when I have a friend or a dude, you know, a friend that step out on their family. It's always the same silly excuses. Ooh, you know, she don't cut it no more, and all this other stuff. So, uh, why don't you just leave if that's the situation? Was she gonna take half my stuff? Well, nigga, that's the contract you signed. That's the contract you signed. In sickness and health, till death to us part, man. To have and to hold. I mean, seriously, man. Like, we gotta start having some serious conversations about men and women in relationships and... You know, what is this? Now, you know what I'm saying? It's just the little things that I see going around these days. Women and his sneaky links. You know what I'm saying? Sneaky links. It's it, it. <sighs> hookup culture. Society has degraded into. Ugh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you value this so much, sir, why would you cheat on it? Right? Because at the end of the day, she's the one. She is the one that's going to be there for you. You know what I'm saying? What has to happen for 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 um for you to realize that that's what it is? This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. This is the, the reason. It's one of the biggest reasons why you get married. It's because you don't want to be, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to be sick. You don't want to be in a bad situation to have nobody. And when you just around, he, he so doesn't deserve this. Like, I'm telling you, he does not deserve, Don don't deserve it either. I don't like none of the men in this show that, that, are, that are cheating. You know what I'm saying? I can't, it, there is, I've never cheated. I've had moments in my life where I could have, and I've walked away from them. And I just can't understand, yes, you're a man. It's a decision that you that you make. Yes, I know we were born to spread our seeds and, and, and whatever. You know, nowadays people want to try to make it seem like polyamory is the way to go and all of this other stuff. Well, if you, if you want to do that, if you just want to out here having sex, with, with he she and the old lady that's this that's for that's for you 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 go ahead and do that see how fulfilling that's going to be after a while you get what i'm saying it's like oh men want to sleep with as many many men want to sleep with as many women as they as, as they can right yes it is, it is natural for us to come to that conclusion i completely understand and agree on that point but when you get married when you choose to spend your life with rest of your life with somebody you're giving her your resources and i understand those point of views but at the same time you are making a choice to be loyal to someone this is not unless you establish from the get-go that hey you know what i'm saying you're gonna be the wife you gonna enjoy all these resources but i'm gonna be smashing chicks on the side i'm gonna have i'm still gonna have chicks on the side so that's just what it is. And if she still decide to come on board and be your wife, then that's cool. But the majority of men out here, the majority of women out here that step outside their relationships, step outside their marriages, that ain't the situation. It's not. It's just not. And that's the honest truth. And you guys know it too. So he does not deserve this not by a long shot he deserves this you know what i'm saying now you're crying 
can't feel sorry for you. But then again, who knows? You know, lady probably knows that he cheating anyways and don't care. Selling toilet paper. But he he been going behind her back, so he, she doesn't know. Cooper, where is everyone? My roommate just gave me the message. Out. It's the middle of the night. I'm not leaving you here. You should go. Miss Holloway, Roger Sterling has suffered a heart attack. What? He survived it, and he's currently being hospitalized. He sent a telegram to every one of our clients, assuring them that business will not be interrupted. Uh, this is the master client list. Names, addresses, and I'll read them out, and you compose the telegram. Huh? Listen, Roger had a heart attack. What? Don, that's terrible. It... Is he going to be okay? The doctors basically say they don't know. Mona's with him. She must be a wreck. It's good that you're there. What she happened? didn't want to go in the first place, so. <laughs> he work. Big deal. <laughs> he just keeled over. It was awful, actually. Well, if the kids wouldn't be so heartbroken, I'd come home now. You should have seen the two of them in the kitchen tonight. She's making some pot roast with ketchup. <laughs> my father started hovering behind her, watching like he used to with my mother. How can he pretend that she never existed? I still pick up the phone sometimes to call her. Serious issues. <laughs> Let your father enjoy himself. Your mother is dead. And it does. Seriously, and it's not even recent. <laughs> Make sure you eat something. How's he doing? Not great. What happened? I don't know. Every Republican politician wants you to believe that Richard Nixon is, quote, experienced. But listen to the man who should know best, the President of the United States. I just wondered if you could give us an example of a major idea of his that you had adopted in that role as the, as the decider if you give me a week, I might think of one. I don't remember. <laughs> At the same press conference, President Eisenhower said, No one can make a decision except me. Really? I'm sorry. I got the telegram. Let me in. Are you okay? No. You look terrible. Can I get a drink? Of course. You can tell me I'm not moving the account. He's gray and weak. You don't want to lose him. Come on, don't. What good is that going to do? Feels like some solar eclipse. The end of the world, just do whatever you want. I don't know. You do. Sit with me. Why? Because I feel like you're looking right through me over there. I'm not. Is that supposed to be a nightgown? This is very elaborate. <laughs> no one does. I've never heard you talk that much before. Rachel. What do you want from me? You know. I know you do. You know everything about me. I don't. You don't want to do this. You have a wife. You should go to her. Jesus, Rachel. This is it. This is all there is. I feel like it's slipping through my fingers like a handful of sand. Ah, uh, there it is. That's just an excuse for bad behavior. You don't really believe that. No, she doesn't. She actually likes him, but she's trying to resist as much as possible. <laughs> God, this show is. Really, nigga? <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, she probably hadn't eaten that nothing in a while. <laughs> I wonder if 
if he will end up with her, if he'll leave his wife for her. I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm so torn with this character, bro. A lot better. He's just a friend. That's not what I'm talking about, my dear. Don't waste your youth on age. I'm trying to think deep to see what that could possibly mean, but. You told me your mother died in childbirth. Mine did too. Oh, I damn. My father paid her, but when she died, they brought me to him and his wife. And when I was 10 years old, he died. He was a drunk and got kicked in the face by a horse. God damn, what is this, a fairy tale? What? She Bruh. Buried him and took up with some other man. I was raised by those two sorry people. All right, that's probably the best episode I've seen this far this season. That got me, like in my feelings <laughs> it got me in my feelings because you know what i'm saying like it's it's so like uh, i don't know how to describe it man because things like this it 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 breaks my heart because for some reason he feels like he can't be this vulnerable you know he can't be this vulnerable with his wife right just betty i don't know why is that and and the thing about it is too i've heard men that cheat say that they they say that as well it's like they can't be you know it's just like they'll the, the woman that they're cheating with listens like they'll hear them out and the reason why this hit home so much for me is that you want to be as masculine as possible for your woman and a lot of these women today where they're talking about oh they want men to show their you know their vulnerable their soft side their feminine side and all you get their bullshit out of here the minute last minute the minute we we do some shit like that y'all lose respect for us and i'm not i'm talking about like if we go too deep you know what i'm saying i'm not talking about some surface level stuff like i'm talking about if you go too deep talking about too deep of a things that may hurt us um you know what i'm saying god forbid we should shed tears you know what i'm saying and the thing about it is that I never had that. And I've been married before. Divorced now, but I was married before and it, it wasn't the greatest experience when it comes on to that because I wasn't, I didn't really have men in my life to teach me. My mom and my dad has been married for years and I, uh, I don't, my dad never taught me anything. And that's, that's just the honest truth that I'm saying. It's like the person I am today have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with him. And that's, you know what I'm saying? I'm not here trying to, you know, you know, put my dad down or anything like that. Cause I, I've forgiven him because he didn't, he doesn't know any better. You get what I'm saying? So, I, you know, my mom has been telling me that for years, but I never really understood what she meant. You know what I mean? But this episode kind of, you know, it, I don't, I, I, I can't condone what Don is doing, but at the same time, I understand why he's doing what he's doing though, because it, it's weird because at a time like this, when you see a man do something like this, 
I'm telling you this from a man's perspective, from my perspective, right? Mind you, I'm not going to sleep with another woman behind my woman's back, but I have talked to like other females that would listen to me like over the phone when I was having like issues, like stuff that I couldn't talk to my wife then about. I would talk to other females that were close to me that were my friends. They didn't live close to me or anything. I wasn't cheating with them. Okay. Um, old, you know, women that, um, that I, um, went to school with and stuff that, you know what I'm saying? Back from back home, stuff like that. And there was this one particular girl, you know what I'm saying? That, and it was only when I was going through stuff. I don't know. It, I don't think she wanted to be with me or anything like that. And vice versa. You get what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to be with her or anything like that. And she wasn't ugly by any means. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's a slippery slope and I'm, I'm being completely transparent with y'all. So don't come bully me for <laughs> whatever. I'm just trying to be truthful about it. Um, based on what I just saw in the show and it's just a person that just listened to me. You know, I wasn't laying in her lap or stroking my hair or any shit like that. It was just, just over the phone. The conversations never went anywhere than other than the fact that she just listened to me and if she wanted to talk about anything about her relationship i would listen to her and maybe you can maybe you will say that was wrong and you know in retrospect sometimes when i look at it you know i i feel like it was wrong you get what i'm saying for doing that um because the fact of the matter is every time i try to be vulnerable with my wife then she never really understood where I was coming from because basically the relationship was all about her, her, her. Everything is about her because she's going through the most. Why do I have to go through stuff too, right? So because I couldn't really talk to my family at the time, right? Because I couldn't talk to my family at the time because, you know, my wife, my ex-wife, she didn't like the fact that I would talk to my family members. Now, I kind of, you know what I'm saying, would maneuver around that, but I couldn't, it, it was just such a, a weird situation. You know what I'm saying? Now, Don's situation is a little different. I don't know if he could actually talk. Anytime you see a man do something like that, it's always for a reason. It's never because, oh, I just want to cheat. It's a reason. It's, it simply means that that emotional connection that he would want to have with his wife he's found that with somebody else the things that he was saying to her is like you know me you know everything about me now we're talking about somebody this guy literally met on an ad campaign let's just be honest like she, he's doing an ad campaign for her that's how they met they've barely had any conversations and I think it's just the softness of her. And that is not to say that Betty is not soft, but there's some, there's a distinctive difference between these two women. <laughs> I don't want to go into it. I don't want to go into it because it's an extremely unique situation. And if I go into it, it's going to make it seem like I'm condoned Don cheating. And I don't want to go there because the cheating is wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like he could have went there and, you know, relaxed, talked and have a conversation with her without it getting to sex. But it ended up sex happened. She wanted it to. We know that she wanted it from the last time we saw her in an episode. You know, from what her, I believe it was her sister that told her, hey, you can live your life. You know what I'm saying? You can live your life. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, oh, nobody cares about cheating anymore. So you can do whatever you want. You know, and if he doesn't care, if he wants it, why not? You know what I mean? Which is just terrible advice. But <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? To tell your sister to go sleep with a married man. That's just, you know what I mean? I don't believe she did. I don't believe she did. She told 
she told her sister that the guy that she's interested in is married now but either way this was an interesting episode very interesting episode to say the least um it's a tough situation man um dude i think it's um cooper um got the heart attack i don't I, it's hard for me to feel sorry for him because he doesn't deserve the family he has listen man teenagers are teenagers you can't say you don't want to see your daughter whatever the situation is because he thinks his daughter doesn't love him which is completely false she's a teenager see la teenagers lash out all the time you get what i'm saying but if push comes to shove if you're sick your children always want to see you they always they feel that because it's a serious situation you know what i'm saying so very good episode um joan needs to stop sleeping around she she's a hoe i, I just the characters in this show man is it, it just makes it so it's it aggravates me because i know this is this is is so true and grounded because this is how people still operate today or even worse you know what i'm saying and i'm just like they don't even see the emotional damage that they do to themselves by doing stuff like this you know what i mean it's crazy it's crazy man but anywho if you guys have anything to add to this make sure you put it in the comment section man don't forget to like the video this was definitely for me the best episode of the season so far because it's it stirred up a lot of emotion because the whole the casting couch thing and i'm just like yo people be wilding out here man and i i'm just like you i don't know bro. i don't know you need to sprinkle some holy water over these niggas man <laughs> jesus anyways guys see you guys for the next one man peace it's crazy